Hello and welcome. I'm Charlie from UCAS and today I'm going to be talking you through uh, just a latest update from UCAS, thinking quickly back to, to last year, some lessons learned, and then looking forward to this summer and also the new application cycle for the 2022 uh, application scheme, which begins very shortly. First of all, just wanted to say apologies about the, the technical difficulties yesterday. Um, I know a, a few of us had issues um, so apologies this isn't coming live. If you do have any questions though on the back of today's um, session, please feel free to email us at training at ucas.ac.uk. Uh, if you put it for my attention, Charlie, I'm very happy to answer any questions uh, you, you might have. So looking back quickly uh, um, on last year's application cycle, obviously it was dominated by the, the pandemic. Uh, the cancellation of exams and all of the the chaos that kind of followed that with the the awarding of grades, the um, calculated grades, the algorithm, and it, it's fair to say, looking looking at it um, from afar, it'd be very easy to kind of be very negative and 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 look at all the negative headlines. But actually, underneath all of the the stress and difficulty, there was you know a lot of hard work put in by by students, by teachers, by advisors, university staff right across um, the UK to support students going into to higher education. And, and actually, there were um, you know lots of good news stories to take out of it. A couple of things I just wanted to highlight though, 89% um, of students who had their grades changed as a result of the um, algorithm and then going back to uh, teacher assessed grades, 89% of those students still ended up getting placed at either their firm choice of university or a comparable choice. The other thing to, to note is the deferral rate. So there was um, real, real fears and concerns that students applying in 2020 would want to defer their place at university for a year, which would then potentially lead on to uh, increased competition for the 2021 cohort. The deferral rate in 2020 was only 5.7, which is relatively um, sort of flat in terms of change from the previous year. So in 2019, it was 5.14. Um, so actually, you know, worries around high deferral rates uh, didn't didn't materialise. Obviously, the pandemic is still going ahead um, and we're still you know, in the midst of it and the, the issues, uh, there are still lots of issues around. Um, but I would like to kind of really focus on the positives from, from last year and what was a really challenging year for, for so many reasons. There's lots of good news stories to, to take out of it. So we saw um, record numbers of students placed uh, in terms of proportionate university uh, in the UK last year through UCAS. And actually, this isn't particularly surprising. When we think about um, previous times of difficulty in the economy and the jobs market, higher education tends to be do quite well out of this in what we call the solace in education effect. Um, we've seen an increase in mature students going uh, applying successfully to university. And what this means to you guys as teachers and advisors is when you are supporting your students now for 2021 and, and probably for the next year, if not if not two or three, is that your students who are applying directly from school or from college need to understand that, particularly for the really selective and competitive courses, they could be competing for a place alongside a mature applicant. You know, so if you've got a student maybe applying for a nursing course, they need to, you know, understand that comp the competition levels are high. So not only do they, obviously their grades need to be um, in, in the right place, but interview, they need to make sure that they are performing well, they're, you know, articulating clearly their reasons, their motivations for wanting to study the course or courses they're applying for. In terms of, um, 18 year olds applying to, to university last year, we saw a record proportion, as I said, it was 37% of UK 18 year olds were placed in um, through UCAS last year, which I think is really encouraging. I mentioned briefly nursing as well. We've seen as a result of the pandemic, uh, what some people are labeling the, the Chris Whitty effect, an increase in um, students applying for the for nursing and medical related courses. I'll go on to a few details for this year's cycle in a moment, but thinking back to the first UK lockdown last March, we saw an increase between March of 2020 and June 2020, an increase in applications to nursing of 63% on the same period last year, which 
um, is you know really positive story to, to take away. In terms of courses and by popularity, um, business and, and management related courses still are the most popular courses students are applying for. We can see there um, subjects allied to medicine, which includes nursing, remain highly popular. In terms of courses which are, are less popular, we are seeing um, language courses really struggling to uh, recruit students in, in kind of volumes that they perhaps did took 10, 15 years ago, uh, which is something to, uh, to bear in mind. Last year, um, we saw clearing become really, uh, really popular. And again, this isn't a huge surprise, but what we did see last year was that during clearing, because of the uncertainty around grades and the, um, the sort of recalculated grades, we saw clearing activity was much lasted much longer than the kind of typical period around results day in, in mid August. We actually saw right up until the end of August in, into September, we saw students being placed in clearing, applying successfully through clearing. Last year as well, we saw the introduction of Clearing Plus. Clearing Plus allowed students who were in clearing to be matched with vacancies in clearing uh, using an algorithm. I know the algorithm isn't always hugely popular amongst teachers, but this was a positive algorithm uh, and we saw nearly 30,000 students placed via Clearing Plus last summer. Clearing Plus is here again in 2021 uh, and details around uh, improvements to Clearing Plus will be released um, in the coming weeks and months. If you are interested in finding out more about um, information around uh, applications to universities, students, um, sort of trends we've seen in applications, then all of our data is freely available to you via our website, ucast.com. And there's an interactive dashboard in which you can go and you can manipulate data. You can see data from uh, individual regions in the UK. You can read analysis and you can really kind of get uh, look under the grill and find out lots of information which might help you supporting students applying to university over the, the coming uh, the coming weeks and months. We saw last year a record number of students from the most disadvantaged group uh, placed at, at the university. And although this is really encouraging, um, encouraging statistic, and, and it's clear that widening participation efforts across um, the UK are, are really starting to, to pay dividends, we ask there is still a, a very clear and distinct gap between the most advantaged and the most disadvantaged in terms of participation in, in higher education. And we did some analysis which, which showed that the annual admission of 70 more of the most disadvantaged English 18 year olds to each higher tariff university could all but eliminate the equality gap by 2030. So 70 more, um, 70 more students admitted to university each cycle would narrow the equality gap by the end of the decade, which I know is, is one of those statistics that sounds great, but actually in practice, there's a lot more things to, th to think about it. Um, but based on current rates of progress, the equality gap isn't going to be uh, eliminated until 2,352, so another 332 years in the future. Um, and the reason this is so important, obviously we, we're trying to encourage uh, equal access to higher education for everybody, but over the next five to 10 years, the number of 18 year olds in the UK population is set to grow really, really quickly. And as the, the kind of competition for places increases, it's really important that the most disadvantaged students are still having a fair opportunity and access to higher education. And as a back, as a result of this, and I'll, I'll mention, I'll talk about this briefly later on, the, go the government is currently undertaking a review into higher education admissions, uh, evaluating the possibility of introducing post qualification admissions. So moving on to the current uh, 2021 application cycle, the first UCAS deadline is the 15th of October deadline. Uh, we saw record numbers of students applying for these courses by the 15th of October. Again, this is um, there's lots of different reasons uh, for this. Uh, we're seeing you know, increased aspiration across demographics, which is really good, really encouraging, really positive. 
We're also seeing uh, there are more places at medical schools available for students to apply to. Uh, and we're also seeing, uh, as, as I said, increased aspiration across um, across students. We're also seeing an increased number of international students applying for these highly um, selective and competitive courses. Moving on then to the 29th of January application deadline last year. Um, the deadline for, for January, as I'm sure you're aware, was moved by two weeks as a result of the uh, lockdown which started in the beginning of, of January. And but we saw, you know, really, really positive statistics at this application deadline. I think it's worthwhile stating before I go into the statistics that if you are supporting students who are still thinking about applying to university this, this year, so 2021, they are still able to apply to university in 2021 up until the 30th of June with five choices on their application. If they are going to apply late though, we always recommend that before they do apply, they check with their university or college before application to ensure they're happy to accept late application. So um, this, these, these statistics are said quite positive. We saw that um, for the first time, uh, more than two fifths of young people applied uh, by the deadline, which is really, really encouraging. And just really demonstrates that appetite for higher education across the UK still remains high, despite all of the kind of mixed uh, and negative headlines that you know, have been sh um, seen uh, over the last uh, kind of weeks and months. Questions now, particularly sort of in, in sort of pol politics around higher education, there has been for years a, a, an ambition to get uh, entry rates up to kind of 50 percent of, of population. Uh, questions now have started to, to appear around whether higher education is right for 50 percent as a target, uh, whether alternative options such as apprenticeships are, are more desirable uh, as well. In terms of mature applicants, we are seeing an inc a, quite a significant increase. Part of that is attributed to um, you know, the, the higher uh, employment rates we're seeing as a result of the, the pandemic. And by mature applicants, we are saying anyone who is over the age of 21. Um, we are seeing uh, significant drops in terms of EU applications. And this is um, a noticeable part down to kind of Brexit fears around um, that. But we are seeing international applications outside of the EU still growing year on year. Uh, we're seeing applications from China and India especially really, really um, sort of increasing rapidly. Again, this is just highlighting that students applying from the UK need to understand that for the highly selective and competitive courses, they need to make sure their applications are as strong as possible um, before they apply. And if they are invited to interview, again, their interview performance needs to be really solid and strong to give them the best chance of competing in a, a really competitive market. I wanted to briefly talk about, uh, and, and I'm not going to sort of dwell on this too much, but we did a, um, a report, uh, some analysis on students over the last 12 months, and we did a whole range of questions around a variety of different topics. Um, but one of the things that we we kind of focused on, I think it's worthwhile hi highlighting to teachers and advisors, is um, student spending. So we know that um, when students are applying to university, they will spend a lot of time researching their options. They'll spend a lot of time maybe planning their personal statement. Um, they'll spend a lot of time sort of thinking about where they want to study. But also, what, what we find, well, what this report has highlighted is that students are going into university slightly naive around the, the kind of their spending and the way that they are kind of using the funds that they get given. So we, we uh, we interviewed um, uh, over sort of 20,000 students and one of their themes was around finance and budgeting and, and part-time jobs. And that we did an analysis which showed that lots and lots of students really regretted at the end of their first term of university not investing money in a laptop, a printer and course materials and books. Now, speaking to, to this audience is probably Fair to say that you, you know you guys would hopefully encourage students to, to do this, but I think it's worthwhile just just having conversations with students around what they do in terms of preparation for university outside the kind of the course and the accommodation. But actually, the wider kind of budgeting and planning is in, plays an important role and can have a big impact on um, success uh, and enjoyment of of university. So, looking forward then to. Um, going over the next couple of months. Um, over the last 12 months, UCAS has really 
increased our engagement with students, with teachers and advisors in a digital format. So we hopefully uh, you, you've seen some of our Facebook live sessions that we um, started to run. We're running these usually they're on a Thursday afternoon um, and they're either for students or for teachers and advisors. We've done Facebook lives around um, choice, around writing personal statements, around um, re replying to offers. The next one uh, next Thursday at 4 p.m. is around the accommodation. And we're also doing a series of sessions on through the UCAS hub um, live events, which allow students to ask questions not only to UCAS, but also to universities and other industry experts to support um, to support students in their decision making process. We've run a series of live Q&A sessions um, over Zoom for teachers and advisors as well. We did one earlier this week for the 2022 application cycle, and there's a link there to um, future sessions which are coming up. And also just wanted to briefly highlight uh, the UCAS Discovery Days. These are um, the replacement of um, the UCAS exhibitions and our digital opportunity for students to discover opportunities available to them post school and college, not just university and higher education, but also apprenticeships and other opportunities as well. So the, the 2021 cycle then, which obviously we're, we're still going through at the moment, um, the, the 29th of January deadline has obviously passed, but students, as I say, can still apply right up until the main scheme closes on the 30th of June. Students who are waiting to receive um, offers at the moment, um, they they if they as long as they applied on time, by, so 6 p.m. on the 29th of January, they will expect to receive their decisions from universities and colleges by the 20th of May. If they haven't received decisions, by the 20th of May, we will reject those applications by default um, on the at midnight on the 20th of May. Students then have until the 10th of June to which um, they in which to make their replies to offers. Um, these dates are uh, sort of have all been pushed back two two weeks uh, in response and it uh, as a kind of knock on effect of the January deadline being pushed back. Looking forward to the summer, um, as I'm sure you're aware. Results day, so A level results day, um, main vocational qualifications, BTEC qualifications, Scottish qualifications are all being released on Tuesday, the 10th of August. Now, um, at the moment, we are still waiting details around um, exactly how results are going to be released, how results are going to be processed across from us to universities. Um, and as soon as details are announced, we will be communicating this out as clearly as possible. So but the Tuesday, the 10th of August is the kind of the date by which um, you know, the vast majority of students will find out not only their results, but also whether they've been confirmed at university or not. So I mentioned briefly the discovery days. I just wanted to highlight them um, quickly if you haven't uh, b been aware of them previously. So the, the next one and the last one for this uh, cycle is on the 5th of May, which is next Wednesday. And as I said, these are a replacement of the standard UCAS exhibitions and a great opportunity for students to um, meet universities, meet employers and find out information about their next step. Next week, we've got um, Dr. Alex from Love Island doing a talk on uh, student mental health and wellbeing. We've also got um, other guest presenters and speakers to helping students to make, uh, make their decisions uh, so these these discovery days are aimed at your lower sixth or your year 12 students, um, but they are uh, available for anyone to register for them. They're not they are live on the on the 5th of May. They also then or the the sessions are then available on demand for 30 days after the 5th of May. And then the, the next series. So for the um, for the, the next cohort of students coming through begin in June and more information will be processed and sent out um, in in due course via the advisor newsletter. And there's a link here to a range of resources that UCAS have produced to support students and teachers and advisors uh, at the discovery day. So we've got information about what's available, information about how to prepare students for these days to make sure you're making the most of, uh, of these opportunities. As well as the discovery days, um, there are lots of universities still doing virtual open days. 
I know some are beginning to do uh, in-person open days where where appropriate and where possible in, in kind of accordance with the, the kind of latest guidelines. Um, but lots and lots of virtual events are available and you can search these via UCAS.com. Not just events, but we've seen lots of universities provide um, kind of sample lectures and seminars and giving, trying to give students an opportunity to sample university life, albeit in a kind of digital uh, environment. We know a big part of decision making for students is usually the, the opportunity to go and visit a university town or city. And in the pandemic, it, it's not been possible for lots of people to do that. Um, so I would recommend students who are unsure about where they're, where they're going to go and, and study and live to check out the UK City Guides, which are a great way to find out a little bit more about the university town or city. I did just want to mention briefly um, the change of reference guidance, which was released this year. The reference guidance for the 2022 cycle is yet to be finalised, uh, but we will be communicating this out uh, as soon as possible. But what we decided in November it's due to kind of the ongoing uh, disruption because of the pandemic to sort of simplify the reference process for the majority of students. So what we're saying here is, is you can see on the screen is that contextual information about COVID and your COVID response is still really important. But what you can do to simplify the process, to simplify and save your um, your, your own time is you can just focus on the, that, the context. What you can do and is optional is you can provide less information about the individual student um, as it says there. So you don't have to go into the in-depth um, way of uh, analysing student and providing a reference that you might have done previously. Now, if you've done references for this 2021 cycle in the old far style, absolutely not a problem at all, uh, but it's just there as an alternative way to complete references in what is a really kind of stressful and unusual time. At the moment, this guidance is only for the 2021 entry. and We are yet to finalise, as I said, the 2022 uh, guidance. Um, but it's important to say that applicants are not going to be disadvantaged by whichever uh, format or approach you decide to take. Universities and colleges know full well um, that this you know, is an option. Um, what we have said and what universities have said is they may, if needed, contact a referee directly if they require further information but it won't um, have any impact on any decision made on a student or an individual. So the 2022 cycle is fast approaching, so it's actually starting next week or opens next week and I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a moment. For the 2022 application cycle, um, we are releasing and changing the application form for students. Now, I'm going to go through that in a bit more detail in a moment. Uh, it's not changing, this is really, really important to say, fundamentally what we're requiring of students. Students will still have to write a personal statement. They will still only be able to apply to a maximum of five choices. What we're doing is modernising and simplifying the approach for students when applying through UCAS. We are changing slightly the application um, fee, so it's raising for to £26.50 for multiple choices or it's going up and £22 for an individual choice. If you want to see a demo of the new changes for 2022, there's a link there uh, which I provided for you to go and have a look. So the key dates for your diary. Next Tuesday, the 4th of May, the UCAS search tool opens with course information being displayed for 2022 courses. So at the moment, universities and colleges are working very busily in the background to update all of their course information so that your students, when they go on to search next week, will be able to view information about 2022 courses. A week later, on Tuesday the 11th of May, your 2022 ad uh, advisor portal will become available. Now for this, we are, we are carrying over from last year your groups, your permissions, and, every, and your setup in your advisor portal. If you don't want to carry this over, what you'll need to do is you need to go in and need to amend it and, and edit it. But um, it's there, designed, ready for you to, to go and review before students have access to the 2022 application from the 18th of May. As I said, um, the new application form is being is there for students, and I'll go through that in detail in a moment. Students can start their application then from, from the 18th of May. They are not able to submit their application 
until the 7th of September. And it's usually around nine o'clock in the morning on 7th of September, the students can submit their application. So said so the application form for students is changing and here's just going to brief overview of what to expect. So the first thing to be aware of, and hopefully you'll recognise this as a real positive, is that students will create their UCAS hub account and they'll use the credentials they create for the hub account for their application, when they're creating the application, but also when they're after submission. So instead of having, having separate logins for the application form and track, it's now all under one application for making it simpler and easier for them to use. We've also massively improved the layout, uh, kind of modernised it, made it fresher, made it, made it more accessible. The help text that students will have access to is a lot clearer, it's a lot more accessible. The text and everything, is, it just looks much more modern. We've slightly amended the um, sections and I'll go through those in a moment, but in, in terms of the information required from your students, it's not changing significantly. So students will go through, they'll create their UCAS Hub account. Students who've already created a UCAS Hub account before the cycle opens, once the cycle opens, they will actually see in their hub account this application um, widget will apply, it will appear, and they'll be able to start the application. So they don't need to re-register if they've already registered. As before, when they register, they will enter a buzzword which will allow them to link their application to your school or college. If they register without linking using the buzzword, they can, as before, uh, enter the buzzword at a later date. So this is what students will see in terms of the application um, they will have a profile in which they need to complete each section. Once they've completed all sections, they'll see here uh, the profile is complete and it, will, it turns green as well. So it's kind of visually, hopefully you can see it's a lot clearer, a lot easier for students to, to use. They're only able to submit the application once the percentage completion is at 100 um, and you can see there the, the different sections which are available. I'll talk you through in a moment how you can kind of see this in more detail. And hopefully you can see here the choices section is a lot more clear and visible for students to use. Students will need to mark each section as complete, as I said, and I'll get the percentage um, completion will appear. And once that once each section is completed, it turns green. Um, the residency questions for UK students is changing slightly as a result of changes to legislation. Uh, uh, Brexit, um, but students, you know, your students who are completing this for the first time will hopefully find it really intuitive to use. They'll be um, kind of clear what's expected of them and they'll be able to go through it nice and easily. In terms of uh, comparison to the last year's application, here you can see on the left hand side the sections that were there previously, and then on the right hand side um, there are sections uh, that in the 2022 uh, application form. All of these sections were asked in various different ways last year, but as you can see, it's just broken down into a bit more detail. The work experience section, uh, we are still finalising it. It is likely to be cha to change to employment, not work experience. So um, the employment section here is for paid employment only, um, but clear guidance will be released when the application form becomes live. In terms of um, kind of the different individual questions, uh, as you can see here, there's a range of, of, of kind of different um, different kind of structure and layout. But again, the information being required of students this year it isn't changing significantly. The advisor portal is being updated to reflect these changes, you know, giving you increased functionality. So you're able to uh, email students from um, from the advisor portal. The student is, the issue with students being able to opt in to to to, to track or not is is being taken away. Uh, you're also able like to return up your applications to students, give them messages, give them a bit more uh, information in those return messages, um, which we know is a big issue last year. You're also able to uh, make more extensive notes within the advisor portal, and um, you are able to support students um, in resetting uh, their passwords if they need to. So in terms of resources to support you for this launch, we've got lots and lots of things to support you uh, with, with it. So for the 2022 application cycle, and there's a link here at the bottom of the page, we've created a huge range of resources to support you 
and your students. So we've got PowerPoint presentations which are ready for you to use in the classroom, not only with students, but if you wanted to use them with parents evening, they're available. These include um, page by page screenshots of all of the information um, required of students. We've also got a range of lesson plans which have been created by teachers, so do use these to support the launch of UCAS with your students. We've got activities and resources to use as well, uh, as well as comprehensive guides we, we, we've worked with, with which to support you supporting your students um, over, the, over their application. I wanted to briefly mention the uh, our new historic entry grade tool. This has been available now for a couple of months and is available via the advisor portal uh, dashboard. What this does is it allows um, you as a teacher and advisor to view uh, historic grades that students held uh, when they were accepted onto courses in the last couple of cycles. What this tool is trying to do, or was aiming to do, is empowering students to make aspiration, aspirational choices when applying to university. Often we know that students will get put off by perceived um, entry requirements that they might think are out of their reach and they don't necessarily appreciate that entry requirements can be flexible. So what we're saying to you as a teacher and advisor, if you have a student who's on the fence about whether to apply or not, if you use this tool, you might be able to kind of find information which will really encourage a student. They have what it takes to be made um, made an offer. At the moment, we're asking you not to share the tool with students, but it's there to use alongside them. And what you can see is you can see the range of uh, entry requirements and, and, and qualifications held by students when they're actually accepted onto a course um, in the last couple of years. And we will update this um, year on year. So I've, I've mentioned a couple of resources. And I just wanted to really kind of finish by signposting some some more key ways for you to kind of stay up to date. So on um, on UCAS.com, you can sign up for the UCAS uh, Teacher and Advisor newsletter, which is sent out monthly, containing key information. And there's a link to sign up there. Please do, um, you know, register to receive these if you haven't got these already. We've got our professional development platform as well, which I'll go on to explain in a bit more detail in a moment. But effectively, on there we have a range of free modules for you to use. The UCAS.com website contains um, a specific section for advisors that contains all of the resources which I've mentioned today and is continually updated to reflect the latest information, including the advisor guide, which is, is updated each, each year. As I said, we have um, detailed lesson plans which are available for you to use um, in the classroom with students. You know, now the hub is the, the the way for students to create their UCAS application, to explore their opportunities, to find tailored information that is bespoke and ready in, in individual to them. Uh, so there's lots of re resources there to support you. So do have a look at these or check out our live sessions, which we've done on the hub, um, which really kind of explain how to maximise uh, the, the, the hub and all of its uh, information and touch points. The hub, I should also stress, is not just for higher education. There is um, opportunities and information in the hub about apprenticeships and employment as well. And um, so, you know, not just uh, students are considering how HE can, can, map, can use the hub effectively. I want to briefly mention, and I know there's lots going on at the moment. You, you may or may not be aware that at the moment, the Department for Education is undertaking a consultation, exploring the possibility of changing the higher education's admissions process to a post qualifications system. In terms of what that means, there are various different models being explored. And at the moment, what the Department for Education is asking is if people have any really strong views about reform, about changing the system, then they should uh, complete the, the form. There's a link to it there by the 13th of May. UCAS, as you would expect, is, is a highly uh, involved with these discussions, we have put through our own arguments and there's a link to our, our stance there at the top of the page. Um, it's not for me to kind of sit here and provide an opinion, but if you do have any kind of strong feelings either way about post qualifications uh, admissions, um, then I would really encourage you to kind of get involved uh, and input your thoughts um, to the Department for Education. One thing I did want to briefly mention, and it's just a small thing, but it, it, it's just to make you aware, um, we have increased the data um, security on our platform. So when you are signing into UCAS.com now, you may sometimes be asked to provide 
a secondary bit of information outside of your password. This will be uh, usually a code which will be emailed to your registered um, UCAS email address. Uh, this is just a, an added layer of security. We've seen an increased number of um, data breaches across the higher education sector, particularly over the last sort of two to three months. Um, so we're just making sure that our systems are secure uh, as possible. So if you do get asked to provide extra information, it is you know genuine. It is, has come from us. I mentioned our professional development platform um, is available for free at pdp.ucas.com. We have a range of resources on the platform, including e-modules on all things UCAS, and we will be um, soon to launch the new module to support the 2022 cycle. Um, but there's lots of information there to um, for you to get stuck into if you'd like to. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate there's a lot of information I've um, sort of given you today. So if you do have any questions, please do get in contact with our schools team. Number and email address is there. Do get in contact with um, myself or any of the, my team at the, the training email address. And if you don't do so already and you're on social media, I would recommend that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So we're doing a lot of engagement on these platforms over the last um, year or so uh, and lots of information is available there. I would also ask you to, if you have uh, a spare couple of moments, just to evaluate today's session. I appreciate that uh, you're know, really busy. Um, but any feedback you could provide us would be really, really appreciated. Uh, you know, we are still adapting and, and learning to provide training digitally, and any feedback will be greatly, greatly appreciated. As I said, um, apologies again for the technical issues yesterday. Um, I'm sure you all understand it's not ideal working uh, remotely, but it, it is what it is. Please do um, reach out if you have any questions to, to myself. I'm Charlie uh, at UCAS, uh, training at ucas.ac.uk. be very happy to help you in any way that I can. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you found the session useful and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Thank you.